So, uh, well, I, uh, we suggested to discuss uh, uh, several questions and uh, more came later. Uh, uh, so it's just examples. So for the how to compare the project sensitivities given different status of the experiment and where it occurred is uh, which the predictions are obtained. I mean, uh, usually where people uh, got the idea how a particular model can be tested with a particular experiment or a particular measurement. Measurements, uh, well, uh, the first uh, estimates are kind of uh, order of what magnitude are estimate. Uh, usually uh, detected efficiencies, uh, backgrounds or whatever, they just, you know, estimate it very, 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 very roughly. And then present the limits uh, uh, which could be obtained with this technique. Uh, however, the next step, usually people ask, well, if you compare your results with the previous one, uh, can you show? And so people finally uh, plot both or put all the curves on the same plot and some of the curves obtained uh, by, you know, uh, huge groups of people accounting for various, uh, very, uh, you know, very uh, detailed calculations of and estimates of signal and background and whatever, whatever. And others are just, you know, um, very, very rough. So how, I mean, it's, it's they, they have different, different uh, level of accuracy and still they're on the same, on the same plot. This is one of the, the, the topics. Another is, uh, uh, when should we stop to test the model if the model parameter space is not fully constrained from theoretical or experimental or cosmological considerations? I mean, uh, you know, we uh, sometimes we have some uh, uh, motivation for a particular model, but sometimes we just say that it could be, uh, and uh, say the dark matter can be explained with a, if the parameters uh, are goes along the very uh, you know just a line, and uh, still we try to to cover the whole region. Imagine that we already covered the the region where we have the dark matter prediction uh, should be stopped there or or or, or, or uh, at some or uh, at this point we should stop to, to consider the model as serious it's actually related to the, the first uh, question which criteria to use uh, to use to uh, to choose a model among the billions uh, proposed by theorists it's indeed uh, the situation we can add one more parameter or one just one more uh, ingredient more species one more and then scholar but then scholar can couple to many, many particles in the model. And then you have a lot of new parameters and, uh, and it still can be motivated. Like imagine that you have, for example, the sterile neutrino or uh, heavy neutral leptons and uh, their mass, the Majorana mass is given by hand. Uh, we can argue that what it, it, it would be better to have a scholar and then this scholar can change situation very seriously I mean, in, in, in both in cosmology and in, in terminology. Another question is, uh, well, comparison, we already discussed it actually. Uh, the relations between direct and indirect searches, are they motivated if, or astrophysical or cosmological results, uh, uh, you know, disfavor a particular uh, region of the model? Should we still uh, search, uh, should we still, uh, you know, uh, try to, to cover this region with uh, direct, uh, uh, direct searches? And just to illustrate it, here is uh, there are some slides from uh, from uh, talks uh, given at this um, workshop. So here is a very nice. We already discussed this. Here is the plot. Uh, here is the HNL or sterile neutrinos. Uh, here we have just uh, mass uh, and uh, mixing with electron uh, uh, through the uh, electron neutrino. Okay, and uh, for example. Uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, the relations be between the direct and the direct searches. Yes, the, the, it, some of this uh, of this limit or some of this region are closed by uh, cosmology. Say so here is the uh, limit uh, closed by uh, from the big bang nuclear synthesis. Okay, and uh, there are also limits. Say uh, well, here is a, it's it's written X-ray. Okay. Let's suppose that the dark matter uh, here is due to this uh, uh, heavy neutral lepton. However, you know that because of the mixing, you can then produce uh, these particles. And uh, actually, above uh, some line, it's not written here, all the regions. Uh, it's, it's, it's this line, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. It's uh, just cosmologically forbidden. Still, there are, you know, 
limit there from direct searches that there are uh, projects, uh, say, where is it? Yeah, here is, okay. Uh, to search for uh, this trail in Trina, Katrina and Tristan, here is this uh, regions, okay. And uh, there are further limits, uh, there are further pro projects to search for the Athena uh, experiments, for example, in X-ray. Uh, and uh, you know this region is already excluded from uh, from uh, these cosmological uh, considerations. However, uh, you know, uh, for example, mm, uh, I mean, even from the point of view, it's 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 one thing. It's the relation between cosmology and astro. Another thing is, uh, uh, you know, which criteria we should use to uh, test the model first. Okay, here is the line seesaw written here. It, it applies, uh, well, uh, uh, literally, yes, that uh, if, the, if the nation is above this line, you can have the uh, CISO explanation of uh, smallness of the neutrino mass within this model, okay? Uh, uh, if it's uh, below this line, you can't have it, okay? Or another way, let me say another way, uh, uh, the, the sterile neutrino, which are you, which are, which you're searching for below this line uh, contributes very small to uh, active neutrino mass. And uh, say to explain the atmospheric neutrino mass or, or, or uh, uh, solar neutrino mass, you need something else, okay? So at some, at some, uh, at some uh, region, uh, maybe you should argue that it's, uh, it's reasonable to stop to search for this type of, uh, of particles, okay? It's just to illustrate, to illustrate uh, uh, this, uh, this thing, okay? And uh, uh, well, with, uh, here is the example with the scholar, yes. Oh no, it's, yes. Well, I mean, there are examples with this, uh, here is the vector boson. And uh, it's like that matter, yeah? And, uh, uh, in, in another thing with the, the illustration of, uh, for example, with the uh, projects uh, of different, I mean, uh, future projects, okay. So say here, uh, what is it, where is it? Sorry. Yeah, uh, so for example, here is they have the Matusla, uh, Shipa, uh, CCE, uh, Juner, okay, and uh, all of these, uh, you know, studies are done with different uh, type of accuracy. Uh, often the, the very, uh, I mean, the very uh, detector is not fixed yet, uh, and uh, say in case of Juner, for example, for many years people use the uh, estimates for LBNF, and then uh, later people uh, uh, from specific, specific studies to understand the prospects to search for this. Uh, here is again uh, heavy neutral leptons. Uh, specific studies to understand the prospects to search for these particles at June. And even now, they are not, I mean, because it, actually the near detector is not fixed yet. So uh, there is no any estimate of the backgrounds or, or efficiencies or whatever. So actually, this uh, here can be can even shift uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, and still, you know, people like this type of uh, pictures where several uh, experiments, several projects are on the same plot. But looking at them, they started to, you know, to judge between these experiments, which are, which are, you know, better, more, more sensitive or not. Yet the estimates there are of different levels and uh, different like, qualities. And so it's maybe, you know, not good to, to, to do this. So I mean, uh, it's just illustration of these uh, four four uh, questions I would suggest to discuss. Um, so basically, we the questions went into two classes: one for experimentalists, so, so how we believe the experimental plot, and uh, the other questions for the theorists: what <laughs> what we understand looking at the theoretical plots of the of the same region. So kind of two major parts. <laughs> turned out yeah. So maybe I can start discussing the first point because this was a very important point we had to face when we brought the report for the PBC years ago. 
and um, perhaps uh, this can be improved but at that time uh, the choice was to explain in the text very carefully which were the uh, assumptions uh, uh, done by each proposal okay and we did it really very carefully and asking to each collaboration, each proposal to give us uh, their own viewpoint that then was obviously included, but also weighted with what we understood from an external po point of view. Unfortunately, these didn't, uh, did work up to a certain point because then, as you know, people just grab the plot, uh, put on a slide, and uh, every, every guy is the same. Now we have to repeat the exercise with the new VBC, and so the, the question is open, how to deal with that. My current understanding is that, uh, that we need to have a clear uh, difference between exist projections from existing experiments that clearly are much more uh, reliable because they are based on evaluation of uh, a real uh, detector, backgrounds, efficiency, and so on and so forth, and the projection from uh, non-existing proposals, where it's very difficult to uh, really uh, make a ranking because uh, um, it's true that some proposals are better studied with full Monte Carlo and things like that, but it's also true that the level of, uh, um, of, uh, of the background is very different among proposals. So, for example, if you are on axis in front of an interaction point, it's, it's clear that you have to understand the background very well, much better than anyone who is off axis far away. So, this is very difficult to weight in a graphical way, you know? So um, I think we cannot even uh, jump into the evaluation of uh, the proponents. We cannot really say, no, you have done worse than uh, the other. So my impression is that uh, we have, again, uh, to maybe from a graphical point of view, what I'm thinking is that maybe projection from existing experiment should be, for example, graphically shown with the curve that are continuous curve, while other curve could be dotted or dashed or things like that, so that gives immediately visibly difference. But how to rank the dashed ones is very delicate. It's very delicate because you should be inside the work done by the people inside the collaboration. It's something that is beyond. Uh... I have to say also that being, uh, I, I've been in the SPS committee for many years uh, and uh, at that time uh, when a committee has to evaluate a project it clearly goes deeply into the details. So it's not just a graphical uh, impact that is enough, of course. So whenever you go to the body that has to judge if a proposal is uh, sound, aesthetics accounts uh, very little. So be reassured that maybe the, there is a, for so, uh, some confusion when you are at the conference with a broad spectrum of people in front of you. But when you enter uh, inside a committee, typically it's done by experts that go if they do their job properly, they, they go deeply into the, the business, understand what they have been taken into account and what is not. Uh, I don't see uh, an immediate way of um, representing this on a plot. On the other side, uh, to me, not to produce in these plots, uh, is, is bad because uh, you have to immediately give the feeling what is going on. Also for new proposals, if you want, no? For example, Anubis, we discussed it before Anubis. Anubis will profit from the fact to see how Codex and Matusla are represented on the same plane, no? Otherwise, if Oleg understands that there is nothing to cover more than that, maybe he changes mind. And so I think this is, a, I think it's still valuable uh, service work that we have to do for new proposals. It's clear that as soon as proposal uh, aims to become a real experiment, it has to pass uh, a full set of uh, 
exams, if you want, and, uh, where the, the line uh, has a very limited uh, importance. Was, uh, I don't know, but I'm open also to, also to suggestions. Nothing is written in stone. For sure, we, we have to repeat this exercise with the new PDC. Jonathan will attend the new meetings and, and others will attend the same and we will repeat exercise. And um, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see how to do it at best. Marco. So I'm just thinking out loud based on what you said, Guy, about having to put these things into the same figures. And my very subjective feeling based on those few things that I've been involved in is that one thing that is really makes a difference is whether you uh, consider background free things or not background free things, because background free is really a big game changer. We discussed a few times in these rare process searches. When it comes to other factors, it seems to me, at least this is my personal impression, that this precise shape of the judicial volume, whether it's a few centimeters longer here or there, usually doesn't make a no. big difference in these log log drops, right? It's not a game changer. Indeed, yeah. uh, indeed. <laughs> game changer is the evaluation of the background. We all know that. Uh, so uh, yeah. when it comes to comparing dashed or dotted or faint lines or whatever, I think one criterion that I would personally appreciate this kind of summary plots is distinguished between background free analysis and sort of bumps that took this into account. While it seems, at least to me, that all other factors, well, yes, as I said, about precise detector geometry, efficiencies, whatever, yes. are typically not game changers. And one can probably live with the fact, at least for the purpose of making summary plots, that different collaborations. I fully agree with you. Uh, I fully agree with you. The, the, the composition of all the efficiencies, uh, at most, they can change the, the, aspect, the, the plot by a factor of two, if you are really, really bad in, uh, in doing your detector. Cannot be more than that, that in log log scale, you notice, but uh, mildly. The real game changer is the background. Now, the problem is that uh, from what I've seen so far, um, I really trust only existing experiments evaluation of the background. Because uh, I have to say, it's very difficult from a Monte Carlo point of view to judge if you are controlling all the sources. You know? Even if you are aiming at a zero background level, who knows, first of all, who is able to reproduce in Monte Carlo the full statistics of proton on target that you are aiming to collect in the future? Nobody, because you don't have the computing power, full stop. You have to uh, start to make tricks and uh, reweighting events and things like that. God knows if you are doing something stupid. So there, while you, if you are an existing experiment, you have a well sound established background, you can project towards an upgrade luminosity, an upgrade detector. This is, I trust it. All the rest to me is really vague. Clearly there are several <laughs> shadows of uh, vagueness because you start from the toy to Gen 4. But again, when you, for example, ship, ship is, if you want, is what we think be a zero background experiment. In reality, the background ship is based on is one spill, the equivalent of one spill of protons, one second of data taking. This is the old Monte Carlo ship uses. Then this Monte Carlo is used to reweight events in order to increase, increase, increase the statistics. But the job. Yeah, but, you... but, but, what, what, but what should people do? I mean, somehow they should estimate the, whether it's possible or not. I mean, no. I... I think that from the experiment and proposal point of view, you have to do your best. Okay. This for sure. And you have to explain what you are doing. And probably what has been done so far is exactly what should have been done. It is not questioning that. But if you have to judge, uh, Comparatively, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to judge comparatively. 
So then, then to elaborate my, my proposal to distinguish classes of lines like uh, background free analysis and background analysis, one could make three classes of lines, background analysis based on existing experiment, background analysis based on simulations and background free analysis. If one wants to compare lines and plot to see how serious, and even in how serious something is, you can do solid but dash and dot it or something, you know? Yes, why not? So this could be a possibility that we can elaborate in this uh, center. Uh, maybe we assign different level of, uh, of uh, solid or dashed or dotted lines, depending on uh, if they're based on real data, if they're based on full simulation, uh, or it's just uh, they don't. They I, would, I personally would probably not introduce 20 different categories. I would keep it to a simple, simple or three level system, like something like what I just said. Okay, it's just a, just a spontaneous idea. So. It's, it's an endless or is an, an open. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think we will never get uh, to a real conclusion there. Um, but what I can tell you is that in the official committees, this is uh, deeply taken into account. It's not just a plot that matters. So be reassured that uh, there is a serious analysis usually. But um, is, is there really a strong reason to... Um, condense the job of a committee into a plot in line styles. I mean, it's important that uh, committees look at, it, at this, and this is also what is explained in, in the papers or in the text of the papers, and that's, uh, Indeed, that's yeah. that information should be there, but then trying to boil this down to like three categories of line. I mean, what all, uh, for me, the issue is also, what do you call a background free experiment? I mean, talking to oh, no, our... I think that uh, Marco was referring to experiments that didn't really do any uh, serious evaluation, right? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, and and, and so also, also, sorry, sorry. Like, I did not want to say that the job of the committee should be replaced by a simple plot. My logic was more like, people are going to make these kind of plots anyway. Yes. People yes. always make some plots. They paste them together. Of, of, of course, whatever. of course. And they can be highly misleading if they compare with things that should not really be compared. So my proposal was not to replace proper analysis by this, but I was just saying if things like the physics center or so hand out sort of community-based summary plots that are based on the needs of large fractions of the community, maybe, then I think employing such a simple color or line style could, could help that people in the community can get a quick grasp of how or serious one can take these lines. Of course, that was by no means meant to uh, Replace the work of any community. No, no, reading, sure. the paper, reading the paper. Reading the paper. And moreover, all this should be done uh, in collaboration with the proponents. So it will never be done uh, as a, a top down decision, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there is a point there, and we can certainly discuss this uh, in the future how to present at best uh, this kind of uh, curves. Yes. Yeah. I mean, my issue is simply that uh, even the statement background free can mean very different no, things. No, like free, I don't one, one, spe one specific example, uh, just one colleague I was talking to the other, the other week, a uh, theorist, um, basically for, for him, everything which has fewer than 50 background events is already background free, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it just mean, it can mean so many things. So, yeah, I, I think it's difficult to condense things into light styles. Yes, I agree. I agree. Still, oh, we should so, so, probably make a difference between a full gent based simulation and a toy, you know? So also, Alex, also, also if you are missing the things, I didn't want to say this is doing the background between this one is not. What I want to say is that one could use if since people are going to make such kind of summary plots anyway, paste these things together, it would be helpful if things like community-based things like the physics physics center also make such plots to indicate not whether an experiment is background free or not, but to indicate with the line to which degree things have been studied, like yes. to indicate whether people have yes. actually yes. done a full background analysis or whether this is just a simple back of the envelope estimate by some theorists like myself, you know. Yes, whether yes. People, basically, whether people have experimental data, whether they have run GN4, or whether they've just, you know, 
I'm the yes. theorist, and I see it in that. I don't know, to me that's sensible, but of course... It's... We will discuss it. That is certainly is a, is an open issue, and I think it's important to, to address. We can even conclude that it's hopeless to find a color code, <laughs> but we have to discuss it, for sure. I mean, ideally, you could assign some uncertainty on it, right? And this uncertainty could be based on the on the accuracy of what, however, it was determined, right? Yes, but then so in some plots, it's possible it's possible to show a kind of band, for example, right? Not in an overview, probably that would make things too messy, right? But you know, but in if there was it, some information on the on the uncertainty, that would be ideal, right? But you know, in a, in an upper limit, uh, the background uh, does not produce a band; uh, it produces just a deterioration of the limit. This is what happens. It's not a band around a mean value that stays the same. It's just that everything is pushed up. This is a, By the way, I think Igor and Jean-Luc wanted to say something for a while. But we kept on talking. So. <laughs> yes, please uh, speak, uh, Igor and Jean-Luc. Yes. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I ju just uh, wanted to put uh, a bit of an opinion uh, because uh, recently, when I was uh, well, uh, uh, working on the, the uh, article that I well, uh, <clears throat> talked uh, upon uh, at this uh, workshop, um, and uh, we used the NA62 results, we found that the charm results uh, that they were mentioning uh, was well different, uh, pretty uh, almost by one. Uh, uh, by power of 10, uh, by, uh, order of magnitude, uh, worse than what was uh, shown on the previous uh, 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 white papers and so forth. And, well, charm is an old experiment, and we thought that uh, the constraints were pretty solid, but no, it showed up that uh, where people uh, addressed the results of charm once again, and uh, they found out that uh, the results uh, were not uh, so adequate as they thought they would be. And yes, yes. Yes. yes, because there is also this category, is the category of theorist recasting ancient results. And uh, and this uh, is very valuable, but it's also very dangerous because uh, their understanding of the real uh, detector can be then, uh, very wrong. Huh? Uh, if I remember uh, uh, correct, uh, the uh, issue in, uh, with the charm results was that, well, uh, charm results provided by axion uh, li limits or something like that. And when uh, statisticians, uh, well, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken in the uh, myths, uh, made an, uh, limits from these uh, axion limits uh, towards the, um, uh, well, sky report, uh, uh, light scholars and so forth. And uh, uh, the, people that argued that these limits should be pushed uh, well, higher, so, uh, 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 something about the secondary uh, particles not fully uh, approached to co correctly or something along these lines. So I think that the future FIP Physics Center should address exactly these kind of issues. Yes. So <laughs> it cannot be just a matter of an individual to change the curve of an, of an old experiment. At least uh, this, uh, this should be scrutinized. Because otherwise we're ending, we ending up in, uh, in being in a jungle where everyone... Uh... So this is exactly the reason of having uh, put together uh, a large pool of theorists and a large pool of experimentalist expert of this field, such that this kind of plot are hyper scrutinized and can become a reference for the rest of the community. That's that that is exactly our, our job. Yeah. And right. criticism and uh, comments will be always welcome in the sense that uh, we can overlook things. And uh, we did already in the past, we corrected the mistakes that we found, but uh, it's an infinite job. So, really. 
That is why we needed to establish a sort of body dedicated to that, because uh, also to that, then uh, he should also, for example, define which criteria to use to choose a, a model among a trillions of models. <laughs> Because also this uh, would be part of the discussion. Uh, we started with these benchmarks that were proposed by Maxim Pospelov, uh, that were really excellent because they were representative of broad classes of models and allowed us to collect uh, in a sort of harmonic way an infinite amount of experimental results. And now we have to move on. And mm -hmm. we have to pass to models that are more, uh, com more structured, more complete. And, uh, and, this, uh, we, and we cannot uh, for sure uh, uh, afford to increase the number of benchmarks uh, more than a factor of two. So in addition to the previous 10, 11, there will be another 10. Uh, and this should be carefully, carefully Decided that is why Maxime is there as a, always our brightest theorist, <laughs> helping us in trying to understand in the jungle of proposals which are the more, mm -hmm. more general, more broad, more, more suggestive of answers. <laughs> yes. no, no, not all communities uh, accept this, right? So this. Uh long-lived particle uh, business uh, which with which we have a strong overlap they don't put any single model or plot right because it's kind of lhc based and they go on a sort of a signature basis right uh, one particle decays to two where it decays and so on uh, yes this is a different approach that's a different approach uh, uh, it's hard to visualize and compare, right? Maybe, maybe they don't need to compare because they have just two or three experiments, LHCB Atlas and... Still, uh, they should be able to compare among themselves. <laughs> that, we're, we're kind of moving to, to the second question, basically, to what we do, what we think about the theory. So with experiment, yes, it's clear. Uh, and uh, as a defense for the mentioned charm recalculated plot as the also of that recalculated plot, I would just say it was a long time ago before, before the common effort. <laughs> yes, they, yeah. uh, no, there was a recent uh, reinterpretation of charm uh, a few yeah. years ago. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. about yeah. the sewer, so, so basically, uh, the question is so so there are several questions in my understanding kind of so so one what okay what benchmarks you take right mm. so, so whether you whether the benchmarks that we have cover all possible reasonable models and here i think we are more or less there hey. modular the model of the subtleties with uh Say we are more or less there for the neutrino portal, right? But, uh, now Further the, from there in scalar portal where there are mixing and uh, uh, quartic and uh, say three three linear couplings lambda. So uh, we cannot certainly cover now what uh, is going to happen in the next uh, few years, that's for sure. But uh, just to give you a feeling, for example, for the neutrino portal, for sure we have to pass from the single flavor dominance, which is completely mm -hmm. unrealistic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To uh, benchmarks that uh, within this framework are compatible with the active neutrino mixing parameters. Mm -hmm. so at no, least... no, look, it, it's true, it's true, but this CISO line implies that you can be above but not below. No, Dima, Dima. So here I want to object, Dima. So just uh, this is the second point. The okay. second point is uh, when we, so the first point is whether we covered everything. The second point is, Dima, maybe you can plot the next slide, Dima. Just yes, uh, right? yeah, this <laughs> to one. wave hands on a picture. Yes. So, uh, then uh, the next question is how do we think about the different lines theoreticians put on this plot? So, 
was well, so which we want to test and not say uh, one line is Dima's favorite CISO, say, which says that this particular HNL contributes yes. to CISO mechanism for solar mass. Exactly. And that's and that here was the original motivation. You would find many let, me repeat, let, let me just remind you that it was the original physical motivation for this model. Yes. However, okay? I will want to remind you that the original mod, original model that restarted the whole business, which was done by Misha Shaposhnikov with new MSM, basically, which basically started the whole business, basically started from the statement that the particle, which is dark matter, has nothing to do with system. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, look, look. we have three. Better, better. Look, 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 look. And this was a prediction. Wait a moment. This was a prediction. It's the prediction of the mass hero. You're expected to search for this type of mixing with all, all, all the three neutrinos, okay? And for all the three neutrinos, you have this line. So whatever you, whenever you reach uh, with your, you know, uh, universal detector, you can test all this mixing. I mean, with electrons, with muons, well, tau is a bit problematic, but anyway. Ah, okay. And so in this case, I mean, you, you uh, more or less simultaneously, you cover all this region, okay? And uh, uh, when, once you meet this line, you should say something. Ah, no, so this is a good point. So, so, so your point is that uh, if an experiment searching for something in particle physics uh, should see something above this line because he, it should see uh, one, okay, give or take the benchmark models and the mixing angles somewhere around this line, give or take, you yeah, should yeah, see yeah. Uh, the other ones, yes. So actually, yeah, that's so. So basically, what you want to say that uh, the experimental goal for direct detection more or less should aim to this line, give or take. Yes. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to cover all masses, right? I mean, if you don't cover all masses, you can't say this either, right? So, for example, okay. as you pointed out, Katrin and Tristan, they they try to go for this dark matter motivated, which they're not going to reach in any, in any, uh, in any yeah. way, right? No, no, but yes. they're, they're, they're trying to go for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which, which I think is, is, is still fine, in my opinion, right? So the argument you're saying is, but in order to kind of really rule out neutrino mass generation, you would really need to probe all masses, right? You need to probe all heavy sterile masses, right? Well, down to that level, down to that level, right? Yes. If, if, you, if you didn't see anything down to that level at any mass, right, it, then you could say, okay, H and L's don't work to generate the light neutrino masses, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but here in case of, in case of, uh, I mean, the Katrina and Tristan, yeah, uh, there is also, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, cos cosmologically, all ah. the regions above uh, are excluded. Now, yeah, that, that's that's another point. So that's when, another when, you, when you assume the three neutrino mixing, uh, three neutri sterile neutrinos mixed with active neutrinos, okay, then uh, the regions above, uh, well, uh, roughly uh, uh, roughly this, yes, yes, TMB, BAU, and H0, H0 are excluded. Yeah, this because this is basically anything above this line if there is a sterile neutrino there. This will more or less over the close of the universe. And it's, okay, if you go to a theorist and ask them to create a theory that would allow such a, such a particle even to exist somewhere where Katrina is looking at it. Okay, you can invent it, but frankly, this model is far from being simple. In some, in, in, in the, well, in a very wild sense, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Manfred, Manfred, <laughs> Manfred Lindner has a paper in which he collects these ideas. And well, we, have, the we have a paper providing such a model, but <laughs> Oleg, no, it's not simple. Uh, Jonathan, Oleg, first of all, Oleg has the, the resigned. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a very interesting discussion, but I also would like to bring an experimental perspective into this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think it's it's I think it's very important to make sure that we we span the full signature space that is possible. In some sense, um, I think models that give very similar signatures 
Now they're kind of redundant because I think the main point of all these signatures is first of all, to compare the sensitivity of the experiment, but also to make sure we don't miss something, mm -hmm. right? So for me as an experimentalist, a very, very big value of a model is that, you know, whether it can do something that other models can't. Because we, sh we should also not forget all, all this that we're looking at, they're potentially simplified models. So you could easily add additional degrees of freedom and you can get suddenly uh, agreement with relic uh, density abundance, et cetera, et cetera. So you can play games like this. Yeah, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that of course it is interesting to do the top-down approach and to just think uh, which models do make sense theoret from a theoretical perspective. But I think we should also not forget about um, really you know, pro providing uniform coverage to the signature space because in reality, and we can be as smart as we like, but nature may have decided completely different. Yes. Okay, this is a very long discussion. To me, a relevant question when uh, we approach something uh, is uh, yeah. what, do, what do we learn from a null, null result? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't learn anything, yeah, yeah, but, uh, I mean, you find nothing, what do you learn? Instead, well, if you uh, start from a model uh, with some parameters that should be justified and, uh, and put in the context and... Uh, be compliant with astroparticle cosmology and so on and so forth, you learn that if you don't find anything in any case in that particular model compliant with all the rest uh, you have. Well, uh, you, you, you always test hypotheses, right? So if you mm -hmm. look at this plot, exactly. there is a black line that represents a certain hypothesis. Exactly. Within that model, anything below that line is excluded by over overproduction of dark matter. Anything above it uh, is allowed. So if you can cover everything uh, down to that line uh, uh, and beyond, then you probably kill that particular hypothesis, right? So is it that, I mean, like, is there <laughs> a, a bigger sort of meaning to, to this? I do not know, right? So. I fully share this view. Yeah, yeah, but that's precisely that's the point I'm trying to make, yeah. right? Th that's precisely the point I'm trying to make. You can add some kind of annihilation mechanism and additional degree of freedom, and then this black line becomes meaningless. And then we are back to the signature. Yes, but at least the right? you... So I, I agree that we are testing that we are testing hypotheses for specific models, but I think we should also not lose the... Uh, lose sight of the big picture. No, but I think that if we manage to cover until the relic density here, we exclude uh, a very valuable model uh, and we need uh, to improve it uh, okay. by adding more degrees of freedom. So it's a, it's a positive answer we get back. Oh, you yes. know what I mean? Yes. So you go step by step. Yeah. While if you don't ask, uh, if you don't set up the hypothesis, uh, you don't know even uh, what is the next step. Yeah. What yeah. I mean, yeah, perhaps, perhaps um, just, just to clarify. Jonathan, sorry, um, from Jonathan, yes. probably. <laughs> yes, please. Well, did Oleg want to finish off something? You done, Oleg? Uh, well, one, one <coughs> last sentence, really. I mean, just just to make it clear, I'm not suggesting we shouldn't do hypothesis set, uh, testing. We shouldn't uh, set limits. I'm mean, just saying that we should uh, do this. And in addition, also make sure that we don't forget about signatures. So it's really two things. I'm not yeah. opposing uh, the other approach. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to say, um, I don't know, maybe like a, a big picture perspective. I mean, so we, we are all kind of, uh, you know, experts in this little perspective in, in this particular field. And, you know, for us, it's very important to compare, you know, exactly where that NA64, the NA62 line goes and things like that. Um, but you know, first of all, the, the big perspective is you, you know, you, the, the giant field doesn't really care about this topic. I mean, it's, it's growing and it should be, and it should be much more important than it is. But, you know, you have 5,000 people on Atlas and CMS who don't know anything about this. And, and the, the big picture is we need to just simply get more attention to this field and attention to these small little experiments that can be built for you know fractions of a percent compared to these big ones. 
And so, you know, my, my perspective is maybe a little bit different. I, I don't really care whether the, the lines are dashed or solid or something. You know, how, how do I actually use a plot like this? I look at it and I figure out in one particular piece of parameter space, oh, you know, these seven experiments or seven bounds are relevant. And then if I really care, I have to go read the papers, right? There, there's no substitute for actually the hard work of actually understanding every detail, you know, not just what the, the signal is, but what the background is, maybe even more important, how well is the background known, which is even a harder question at times, right? Um, but, you know, then, then you have to focus in and you have to look at detail. But the, the big picture is, number one, you know, there's a lot of activity and a lot of these things are doing things that are orders of magnitude better than existing things, right? So, I mean, that's another pet peeve I have about these sort of plots, which is sort of unavoidable, but, you know, slight incremental improvements in this plot when the signal goes as epsilon to the fourth or something, which is a common feature, you know, you, you could be probing things at four times the sensitivity and it's sort of lost in, in these sort of plots. But to experts, you know, it, it's, it's, it's known and that's what's important. And so I would say, you know, if it comes down to someone deciding whether they should build an experiment or fund an experiment, you know, as Guy was saying, some people on the SPSC or the LHCC, somebody needs to, you know, analyze things in great, great detail. But from the point of view of the plots, you know, I'm just more concerned that they be complete, that, that every relevant experiment has, you know, an acronym somewhere on the plot. So I know to go look at it when I want to. And number two, I'd like it just to be simply getting across the message that, you know, this is an extremely fertile area with lots of interesting things to do. And people who are just measuring, you know, Higgs branching ratios at Atlas and CMS, maybe they ought to think about doing something else. In any case, along these lines, my personal experience that I think Maxine shares with me, all this activity at CERN uh, until uh, uh, the previous version of the PDC was uh, completely scattered and subdominant uh, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. were just uh, see individuals doing specific searches within existing big experiments. So they were completely unnoticed. The real game changer was exactly these plots because these plots hit deeply inside the European strategy group uh, Mm -hmm. by the management managers of the main funding agency in Europe and each of these people recognized in the plot something that was done in his own lab mm -hmm. suddenly they realized that there was a full physics program that could be exploited and this mm -hmm. happened uh, I can tell you in uh, three months in nine year mm -hmm. it was the time between the publication of this report and uh, the meeting in, uh, in, uh, in Granada, in Badon Badonev. Mm -hmm. And these so, plots so, were, were going around like crazy. And I, yeah. was in, uh, I was even worried that they were taking this plot too seriously because we knew how many approximations are within. But they are so, they, they had a big impact, mm -hmm. big impact for our field. Yeah. So even so, only for P PR <laughs> reasons. Uh, and no, but... Yeah, so th this is this is, I guess, maybe I didn't say it clearly, but this is what I think. I think that the plot exists is important. The details, okay, we can argue and we care a lot, but no, but I think it's really, important on two on, from two point of view. The one, the point of view of the big managers, and this is very important, and we have to care about this absolutely. But then we are serious person also, and we have to do our job seriously. So. If we want to compare things with others, we have to do at our best. Okay, this is my absolute uh, feeling, and I strong, I strong, I have a strong opinion about it. Yeah, you know, but... just put things on a rush on a plot, saying, okay, it doesn't matter if it is go up and down. No, we do at our best, and we continuously improving. This yeah. Is... Okay. I mean, it's certainly there has to be some standard. I'm just saying that uh, should be some standard. It, it doesn't it have to be. It is a shared, right? So that is exactly the reason of this yeah. center should be shared. Yeah. It don't go on alone. But you know, like I, I said uh, in in an answer to the question after my talk, 
Mm. You know, if, if you take things too seriously, you can miss opportunities, right? Like, <laughs> you know, if, if you, if you, a delicate only, balance, uh, mm? right. If you, if you only, you know, if you believe every single sensitivity contour, you'll never do anything because everything you might think to do, it looks like somebody's already doing it. But you know, the fact is that five years from now, a lot of these, you know, dashed curves are still dashed curves and they're not necessarily, you know, <laughs> the truth, right? But so, you, know, uh, uh, to... you are exactly the person you should not speak because you, <laughs> <laughs> you're the only person you should shut up because you had the, your experiment approved at the speed well, of light. <laughs> well, well, so, you know, you, you... So the PBC did some help on that eh? because uh, you were embedded in a big framework and they understood the, the, the interest of your experiment because they put it into a context. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you should believe your own contours 100%, but you, there's, good, there's a advantage to having some skepticism for everybody else's contour. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> In any case, I want to be positive. We have uh, N64 that is growing uh, enormously. We are LDMX that, as you know, is going to be approved as luck. Uh, and uh, we are on the on we are on, on the table. We have many new experiments: Codex B, Matusla, and your phys forward physics facility. But possibly we go on, and we have to continue to push in this direction. This is my strong feeling that it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, and, and, sorry, let me just... us, uh, they are noticing us. We are not any longer invisible, and we have to do a good job now that yeah. they are observing us. But just, just along these lines, only one last statement. I mean, I think that these relic density lines are great as targets, mm -hmm. but you know, I completely agree that you know, if you just do an experiment that's several orders of magnitude better than any existing one. You should just do it. You know, it doesn't necessarily uh, matter. LDMX, a, LDMX is going on any, any, anyhow, you see. It's yeah. going deep in, in, inside the region where, in principle, this model is already excluded. Yeah. But, but you know, like, you know, but, curves, theory curves are, you know, bounds from, even bounds from supernovae, which I would take as more serious than uh, cosmological bounds. You know, there are caveats to all those astro astrophysical bounds as well so sure um, and this I, is I part went of the job this is part of the job uh, Alec yeah. le Alec they left he, he believes uh, cosmology not not, 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 not. Uh, I was going to say a very quick comment on the statement about supernova I think it really depends <laughs> as Alexei said about you what have... cosmological <laughs> bounds because so cosmological the supernova, the supernova modeling is quite a quite a an issue, you know, so there are many uncertainties in the underlying models. So, in some of the cosmological bonds, they can affect it or super established, you know. <laughs> so, I think when you say cosmology with a supernova, then uh, it, to me it's not obvious that supernova is stronger because uh, there are cosmological bonds which I consider much, much more solid than supernova bonds because of the uh, model, modeling of the explosion in the supernova. Yeah, well, I mean, the supernova. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the supernova one, right? There's some papers of clear bloom that say that they don't even exist, right? There are no bounds at all from, from uh, supernovae. But so, okay. That's, to it. He's uh, saying that uh, there, is a, no, there are no strong bounds associated with the energy loss. But if, if you go to something like appearance of gamma rays from uh, from the supernovae right these bonds exist uh, yeah it, yeah uh, it disputes the this uh, this uh, second stage of the explosion sort of the the right. spheres and so on uh, uh, but but the first part uh, you know uh, it, even in the most daring proposals for supernovae uh, physics revisions uh, not all bounds are raised right but I agree that supernova is, is a com complicated system, right? But on the other hand, if your model contradicts, I don't know, solar energy loss by 10 orders of magnitude, then, then you, you yeah. got to rethink your model, right? <laughs> so, yeah. but, but, but let me just respond to Marco, though. I mean, most of these bounds, you know, if the, re if the reheating temperature were, you know, 10 MeV or something, they all go away too, right? 
you don't, these cosmological bounds also have some caveats and we don't know anything about the universe hotter than 10 MeV. No, no, it, it, yeah. it's correct. It's correct. But why, for example, we discuss, uh, today we discuss the region of, uh, of neutrino mass at the 1 MeV. Okay, so 1 MeV, sterile neutrinos will be produced. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, that adds to what Alexis said. So when, when complete cosmological bonds, same as astrophysical bonds, I think one has to really distinguish what because some of these bonds are super solid, I would say, because yeah, the cosmological history and, and, and the, the time of the coupling is, is quite well understood. And there's a high level of accuracy. But of course, mm -hmm. if we say things that happen, then if you crucially rely on reconstructing cosmic on the assumption about cosmic history before 10 MeV, quickly fades out in terms of robustness, I would say. In the same fact, yeah, yeah. somebody said that just then that supernova explosion modeling is difficult. The solar model is very good. So uh, right. yeah. one, I think one thing that I actually would ask you insisted on is that when comparing these theory and cosmology plots to experiments, one has to clearly distinguish because there are orders of magnitude differences and how serious these cosmology bonds are depending on what exactly so... what I had also a comment uh, um, regarding the bigger picture and the perception of our community by other parts of particle physics. I, uh, I, I tend to agree that for that, maybe, uh, you know, we do our best to, to, to produce best quality, you know, exclusion curves and projections. And uh, if there is anomaly, we analyze this uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, the rest of the community will not necessarily uh, know exact wiggles of, of our curves. You can uh, reverse it and ask myself if, if I know exactly how the LHC exclusion curves uh, pl uh, you know, plot on M0 and <laughs> one half plane for supersymmetry. And <laughs> I would probably be able to say that, okay, they haven't found anything. And here is like uh, plus minus 200 GV on each axis, how it should, uh, should be, right? But I don't, wouldn't be uh, able to say uh, exactly what these curves are, right? And then uh, same with the Higgs, uh, uh, say branchings, uh, we would say, well, depending on the channel from uh, tw uh, 20 to maybe 10% or even below 5% accuracy in the branchings, but that's about it, right? Uh, uh, so that's the bigger picture. So we should communicate uh, the fact that it's a relevant uh, physics program where that people are pursuing it, are professionals, uh, that if there are some uh, uh, hints on uh, deviations on anomalies they are being, uh, you know, uh, dealt with in professional manner. And uh, I think that that would uh, solidify our work, um, work in the eyes of the uh, bigger community. Yeah. Well, this is kind of what I wanted also to ask to so people who communicate with different community selling, so Gaia, Jonathan. Uh, what is important to sell this field so that it develops? Say, if we go to the LHC field or the high energy field, it's at some moment it had a very, very large driving force. So the Susie, the naturalness, Susie, and grow to infinite sizes, basically the whole particle physics, kind of. So what is important? So what is important to motivate the searches here? What, what people understand? So when you try to sell this experiments, what reasons people identify as a good selling point? I think that for, if you don't talk to experts, I think that the slide that Jonathan showed about these two arrows, one again, towards mm -hmm. IMA, I ah, so, so the, the in the yes uh, in the in the interaction strength I think uh, this is very very clear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, if you don't want to if you are not an expert uh, you this you understand very very easily very easily and if you, you go, go deep for deep more down, because then you go to the more experts uh, then, uh, 
to go to the more expert, for example, here at CERN, I have my continuous uh, comparison with Jan Judic, <laughs> who is not really no one, right? <laughs> and uh, the way in which uh, I, I can talk to him uh, um, about this physics is that uh, these uh, fibri couplings uh, can arise from symmetry that are slightly broken, almost unbroken, or from a last, ma large mass hierarchy, mm -hmm. in case of dimensional couplings, mm -hmm. that in any case seems to emerge from the data because we see nothing. Okay. In that sense, and that clearly depends on model, the model. Uh, okay. But this is somehow enters in the mind of a people that is symmetry oriented. Mm -hmm. I see. So, 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 so basically you translate their yeah. goal to your goal. <laughs> I mean, this uh, is what I found, and I think that in this in this sense, I think that they listen to you. Because that's interesting. Because that's uh, that's kind of what I was asking. Because that's very different from the selling point that uh, people doing the plots like this have in mind. Because people doing the plots, exp theoretical plots like this, have in mind. This is say seesaw line, uh, dark matter explanation in minimal model. It's very different logic. It's, it doesn't uh, have in mind the heavy scale, but also what you scale. But I would say that we are already, I think, in a second step. With this. this was like that a few years ago. Now, I think that we got visibility and uh, now we are entering in a phase in which we have to propose uh, models that are sound. It's not mm -hmm. only portals. Portals are not enough now, I think. People are asking questions. So dark matter can be light. And if so, which is the characteristics? How this comply with astroparticles? How this comply with uh, cosmology? Which are the models that you can test? Which are the free parameters? Which are the hidden parameters? So this is the kind, we are already in a more mature state and not at the level of supersymmetry, of course, because we are. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that more and more these kind of questions are, are asked uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, we need to be, uh, I think that uh, we need to, you did, you do since your own life, I think, Maxime as well. Uh, so to think about uh, really top-down approach. So we have to solve uh, dark matter problem. And, uh, build a model that is not super symmetry related but can answer this question taking into account all the aspects all mm -hmm. the aspects not only a specific signature that you find in a corner of specific experiments mm -hmm. and uh, this is what uh, is the big uh, is the big uh, deal if you want if you are not able to provide uh, this answer clearly uh, nobody ask <laughs> the full uh, theory but uh, reliable sound model yes more and more more we, the more we become visible the more we need a serious theory work yeah mm -hmm. this is my strong uh, that is why uh, maxima knows uh, we discussed many times we need uh, uh, theorists behind us uh, we collected a lot of important uh, names in the physics center we need the help I need help as experimentalist. Simon doesn't need obviously, but I need help also in explaining what we are doing. Why the uh, yeah. are not at the gut scale? <laughs> <for example. laughs> so maybe I, I can provide an, a kind of complimentary answer. So yes. guy is ex guy is explaining how to talk to theorists. <laughs> Let me explain how to talk to experimentalists. Good, okay. <laughs> so, <Excellent. laughs> right. so, In all this, we are all recorded. Eh? So, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so please don't circulate this part of the and <laughs> it becomes hard. Uh, also for me to survive. Yeah, this, this <laughs> should be hidden from YouTube immediately after. It please, it's still it's live it. on YouTube. It should be it. It's yeah. a secret. <laughs> but, but so, so what I found is very interesting. Like, if you start talking about you know, I don't know, various models of physics and stuff for to experimentalists. I think their eyes glaze over. But if you tell them, you know, look, I, with this little experiment, I could probe some exotic pion decay down to branching ratios of 10 to the minus 12, or, you know, four times, four orders of magnitude better, wh whatever the, you know, parameter is. Mm -hmm. I think that appeals to them because they don't really 
put a lot of weight on these theoretical priors. Their attitude is more simply, look, if you look anywhere, but you know, 10,000 times better, you might find something, right? And at least from many of the ones I've talked to, the other thing they like is that somehow this field seems to be going back to the golden era of particle mm -hmm. physics. When, when you could come up with an idea and some small group of people, you know, 10, 20 people could put it forward and get it done. And it wasn't like this uh, sort of industrial size collaboration with management structures and giant speaker boards and you know, all this sort of stuff. And so I, I think I at least I found that um, there's quite a lot of appeal to this field from those who kind of yearn for the good old days, you know, the days when particle physics was, you know, build a little experiment, discover a new particle. Okay, move on. Three years later, we do something else, you know. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I fully understand. Uh, and uh, I know many theorists that uh, like to do this. Uh, and uh, I certainly encourage. Uh, and there's also life that you put inside an experiment. Uh, because uh, if you're interested in a specific aspect, uh, then also the young people are getting more and more interested in uh, things. So I, yeah, for sure, yeah. is, is, is excellent, this kind of... Uh, my view is that, uh, um, at least here at CERN, I have a biased view, eh? I understand, but uh, uh, we would be defined uh, somehow positivist. So people who uh, are just looking at what is, can be measurable without asking the big questions. And, uh, and uh, in, in, in this view, we would be a second ranking category, right? We don't compete with the big question of SUSI and cosmology and uh, things like that. Well, it's, so you uh, are competing with, with the great question of cosmology, actually. No, <laughs> but because, because we have models like new MSM, for example, that is a beautiful model that you is meaning many, 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 many things, right? <laughs> many, many things. But, uh, uh, this is exactly, if you want, the opposite direction with uh, respect to what Jorata was mentioning. No? I think both directions should be kept, both directions. Mm -hmm. But we cannot for forget the first one. We it's cannot forget. Jonathan, I liked it's a lot. the same in the United States. You cannot uh, get an experiment improved if you just say, OK, I'm going to improve the branching of this particle to that pair of particles. But in Europe, it's the same. Europe right. is the same. So you, have to, you have to attach a more serious motivation, but deep down, the experimentalist may be actually swayed by, by, by the fact that you, you know, cover, I don't know, five, six orders of magnitude and branching. Good approach. You search under the lamp post, but then you go further and further away into the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. uh, it, but you need also, to have a bit of yeah. Yeah, and one comment I had uh, also is that maybe one should uh, think of how to uh, approach the experiments that are extremely informative, were done in the past, uh, and uh, now it's impossible to use their results. Or, <laughs> uh, for example, uh, the uh, the KTEV. Um, they looked at the decay of K long to three pi zeros, one of them decays to four electrons. So they investigate, they, they detect four gammas and four Ls, right? But if you ask uh, the question, what is the uh, incidence of two gammas and four Ls, they cannot answer, right? And there is no way uh, anybody can answer. It's in their data. It's either there or not, right? But, but, <laughs> but nobody can, can help. Um, same with the experiments that's still in existence, like Babar. Um, there, the problem is the workforce and... Uh, a certain way, right? They, they are not going to just look into their data, see, okay, there is, it's not there. We estimate the, the efficiency is this, therefore we derive an approximate curve uh, of that uh, nature, right? That clashes with their internal culture, which requires extensive Monte Carlo simulation of the signal and so on, and nobody can actually do anything. So there are a lot of the, like 
some of the decay channels I was talking about yes, uh, yesterday, I informally were looked at at Baba, right? But I cannot say anything, and, and they these people cannot say anything, and they cannot even publish anything because there is no workforce to do that, right? So, so I I do not know how to approach that problem. Uh, uh, on one hand, they have the certain standards uh, of quality set by the fact that they study a lot of the standard model decay rates where like it's crucially important what the the efficiency of your i don't know detection of uh, of uh, pi zeros is uh, but it, but in some uh, limits on the log log plot maybe it doesn't really matter what it is right uh, 10% or 50% you see what i mean so so I don't know. I, I'm not advocating uh, uh, making a, a lot laxer uh, um, um, uh, sort of set of criteria, but uh, this regimental uh, kind of uh, um, disciplines within collaborations sometimes, uh, you know, restrict how we can use their data. But so actually, some just correct me. So there is some motion which is not very good working but probably for discovery tasks like this is can work so there is some movement towards open data from experiments after that some or not nice. listen if you, if you if you get a set of bits and you have no idea about how to compute efficiencies and things like that what do you do with this set of bits no there are two points you see so there are question to make a full exclusion plot a correct exclusion plot or to find something which you suspected can be there. If you find something, then you can persuade people to do a proper, careful analysis. Right. So, and finding something, yeah, then a proper, careful analysis can show, you, no, the event that you filtered out are complete rubbish. Yes, fine. Yes. Uh, what? what? Believe, uh, serious <laughs> exclusion plot, but why not? So what we should uh, try to do, to, what we should push for, and this is another point that I would like to develop in the center, is to try, try to gently force the collaboration to publish all the ingredients necessary to recast the data set. Yeah. yeah. So efficiency yeah. maps, background maps, and uh, because now it's done about on a sporadic uh, way. It should yeah. become a standard, should become a standard, such that yeah. if Maxim in 10 years from now has an idea of how to interpret some NSST2 data, can go back to some articles and the standard, which are the... Because, the because then, yeah, and, and then there are several levels. Say, first, okay, Maxim goes there, does some analysis, mm. finds something. Mm. Of course, nobody believes him. But then he can persuade some, say, you to go there, do the proper analysis. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, then people see, oh, probably this whole data say it was something. Let's really search there. Yeah. Redo and check there with new experiment carefully. Mm. So, so there are steps. But yeah. if, if the data is not there, you cannot even start this uh, cascade. Well, the data will be there, the problem if, if they become accessible to everyone. Is, uh, and moreover, they could be there in a format that is not any longer readable by the current software. No, no, that, that point, it should be so. It, in principle, there should be motion for maintaining the data. Yes, I think it is a big discussion that is ongoing. Yeah, I think. That's a, a different yeah. level, but that's an important point. Yeah. So I don't know. Jean Lou is uh, has a raised hand since an hour. I think. Uh, I don't yeah, know. This is just a quick comment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, as, as you mentioned, it seems that and this uh, analysis preservation is really a hot topic right now among experimentalists. But uh, my impression, talking with uh, the Atlas people, because I'm working with them, is that they have a set of guidelines. They, they will try to let's say, meet uh, the rules which have been set by the collaboration, but there is no guarantee that it's going to work in the future. Uh, and I think there is a lot of value in it's a Trying to um, trying to reproduce this old analysis, trying to because then it, it shows us what what are the real issues that we are encountering. Um, 
for, for instance, you mentioned that the workforce is not here anymore. And this is not something that uh, for instance, Atlas would, would consider. They would mostly focus on uh, saving the data, saving the software environment and uh, all these things. So maybe as part of this, uh, this analysis preservation, um, I think we should we could focus a bit more on past analysis. Um, so yeah. if that was not clear. Yes, yes. It's a valuable comment. Listen, I, I think I have to go home because uh, this discussion is lovely. Yeah. would stay here forever, but I think my family would complain at a certain point. <laughs> it's yeah. 8 o'clock. <laughs> yes, so uh, there are still, so Gaia, yes. So you, you raised a very important point, but we should finish it somehow. <laughs> Which one? Ah, about the models. Yeah, just finish, just finish the workshop. <laughs> Uh, let's let's finish the workshop. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, following guys' suggestion, so I would like to thank everybody, all the participants, to this lovely workshop. Very interesting, and uh, and the excellent discussions and questions. So, two announcement before people fully disappear. Uh, okay, one announcement. Uh, one just, just let's thank the people who helped organize this this workshop. Uh, no, from INR, the Igor Krasnov, uh, Sasha Korochkin, Bulat uh, Varkidinov, and also Maxim Fitkevich, who who is responsible for uh, the you know translate uh, for, for for the video. <laughs> which you can you can you can uh, see now on the website, and also on the website of the conference there will be you know links to. Uh, to the records and uh, to the to the slides. Okay, if somebody still not sent the the uh, uh, there is no. I mean, we asked asked the participants to send us the the transfer uh, the slides. Uh, so if and somebody uh, fail to do this, please uh, do it. Okay, uh, and uh, also uh, also uh, well, the the next year we we. Uh, Actually, uh, very, very, very hope, hope very much uh, that we will be able to organize this conference uh, site. Uh, it's planned to be in uh, Perislav Zareski, and all of you are, you know, welcome to to participate in this conference and uh, to see you and to discuss the physics further.